Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us at Grace Church Online Service this special day, May 10th, Mother's Day. And we have a special, uh, special message for you this morning. But in the meantime, get your elements together. We're going to be taking communion in just a little bit. But first of all, we're going to start off in some worship songs. So let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together this morning, the day we celebrate Mom's Day. And we're so grateful and thankful for our moms. They're, we are so blessed and thankful for the good moms you've given us, Father God. And Father, we just pray that this day will be a special day for them. And we also pray for your anointing and your grace to just flow as we worship you this morning and as we get into your word. And we just dedicate this day to you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Let's worship God.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're our Savior, our reward, Lord God. The Savior alone carried the cross for all of my debts. He paid the cost. Salvation complete and forever for your wonderful grace, your wonderful love this morning. We love you and we adore you, Jesus. We love you with all our hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. You want to get your elements? Hallelujah. So good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to go ahead and take communion. As you get your elements together, let's go and do that. Jesus took the bread, 
And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. So as you get your bread, I want you to say this, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. As we just sung for Calvary, that Jesus chose to go to Calvary for me. His body was broken. It was whipped so that I could be made whole and so that I could be healed. Therefore, I believe that sickness and disease has no part in my body, including coronavirus. Thank you that we're healed by Jesus' stripes. Amen. Go ahead. Break, partake. Jesus took the cup, said, this is my blood shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. I want you to say this. Father God, thank you for the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus that was shed for me. This is my vaccine. This is my antidote that brings me freedom, that made me righteous, that made me holy. Thank you for the blood that has set me free in Jesus' name. Go ahead, drink. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank God for the body and the blood of Christ. At this moment, in just a little bit, I'm going to have Pastor Lucy come on up and share the announcements. Hello, ladies. Good to see you again. We're glad that uh, you all joined us. If this is your first time joining us, we just want to say welcome. We're delighted that you're here to join us today. We ask that you invite somebody. If not, send this video to somebody else because they will be blessed. And we want to just say Happy Mother's yes. Day to all of happy you mothers. mothers. We just want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. You're not here physically. But in spirit, you're here with us. We remember each and every one of you. I can name you by name, but I'm not going to because I don't want to take too much time. But I do want to remind you, thank you for your faithful giving. We thank you that there's different forms that you are able to give. You can give online at graceofaz.com. You can text 623-242-5747. Or you can mail it to us at Grace church at 13,000 West Wolfley Drive. I will always text you and let you know that I've received your um, envelope so that way you're secure that your giving was uh, received. And so we thank you for that. Also, I just want to encourage you. Some of you, I know that this last past year you lost your mom and it's been a tough year for you. And this is your first year that you're going to experience uh, um, the Mother's Day without your mom. But I want to remind you Allow Jesus to love you today. Amen. As you're spending time with your family or whatever it is that you're doing, I want you to open up your heart and I want you to allow Jesus to love you today. Yes. Because, you know, as we just finished singing, he's your healer. He, he has begun to heal your heart. And yes, there's more that needs to be healed. But Jesus, if you look to him, he will continue to heal your yes. heart. He will restore it. Amen. He will rebuild. And I believe with all my heart that he will put somebody else in your path that will not take the place of your mother, but that will be that person that God will send to you. Because God always, he doesn't leave us orphans, the Bible says. He doesn't leave us without parents. So I believe he will put somebody in your path that will minister to you and that will continue to love you as the daughter that you are, the blessing that you are. And so we just, Pastor and I, we just want to say we love you yes, all. We, we thank you. you for watching today. And we know that you're going to be blessed by Pastor Ruby's message today. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, hon. Thank you. Amen. I know, yes, talking about, she just mentioned about mothers. Wednesday was my mom's second anniversary going home to be with the Lord. So, so it's, it's, it's incredible. It's already been two years, you know, that my mom went home to be with the Lord. And I'm like, oh, my. So just, you know, and uh, it was right before Mother's Day. But I know she's rejoicing. She's having a good time up there. So I just told the Lord, Lord, tell her I said hi and that I love her. And while you're doing that, tell my dad hi, too. <laughs> Amen. And we'll see them soon. 
Amen. We'll see them soon and stuff. Amen. If you need a, a offering envelope for your giving, <laughs> I say this by faith every Sunday because one day we'll be doing that and you'll be receiving the offering from one of the ushers and so forth. So again, if you have your giving ready to give this, this week, pick, you can have your offering and, and, and get ready to give. Again, thank you again for your support and for giving uh, towards Grace Church while, you know, we've been, you know, as far as closed, meet, as far as meeting wise. So, again, your faithful support has been awesome and, and we thank God for that. Amen. And let me give you what the status is on our, on our children's wing. Um, you want to give us uh, some pictures? Here's a little, pla we already got the platform built for the elementary class. So they're going to have a own, that, that's going to have an 82 inch TV in the back over here. So they're going to be, it's going to be nice in the elements. Show me, show me another picture. Electrical is going on right now. And as you can see, the lines there are running to power the units. Uh, I think, yeah, yes, power the air handlers and the units and the water heater th thing for the bathrooms. So that's what, that's what I told the guy. I might paint those like rainbows. So it's because it's, it's going to be like a sky thing. Now, go ahead and show the next one. As you can see, and today, in fact, today they were putting up the boxes. So that's the boxes where the lights will be uh, attached to for the lighting in each one of the rooms. That's going up today. So, and it takes time to do it. Again, that's another picture of the elementary room. A little bit bigger picture of it, as you can see. Uh, it's like an 8 by 4 So it'll be a good size platform for the elementary teachers. And enough room, too, if later on the children have a, their own praise team, they could have room for drums and whatever else they want to do, and especially with the nice big screen they're going to have and stuff, so that's nice. You got one more? And I took this picture of the, during the week of, of the garden. Everything's blooming, and look at how beautiful the, the garden is. It's, it's just the, all the, it's like yellow snow, right? <laughs> and so it's all, all the Palo Verdes are blooming. I thought that was such a beautiful picture. And that's going to be the view from, from the elementary room with, when we get the windows up and so forth. So again, thank you for giving. Let's look at our new total. Uh, get, hold on a second. Let me get my, um, let me get my thing ready here. I got to be ready. I got to, uh, uh, ready, go ahead. You want to put the new total? Our new total is... One hundred and seventy-five thousand four hundred and twenty-four and ten cents. That ten cents keeps remaining there, right? <laughs> Amen. So thank you again for your giving. Again, I, I mean, I'm just being honest with you, we're getting to the nitty-gritty right now, but we just keep believing God. The money's going to keep coming in, so we can keep going on. I'm getting a bid. Uh, I'm getting a bid for the drywall installation and the finish and whatever now um, it might take a while to find somebody to do the insulation so we might end up doing it. I might need some help but I don't want to get that ugly insulation the one that you know the fiberglass I want to get this sound type that's made out of Levi denim and whatever recycled so you could put it by hand it won't sting or anything like that so if I do I'll let you know men or women whoever wants to come and help to put the insulation up before we do the drywall we're still waiting for electrical to finish and I got the fire alarm guy to do that and after that we'll be ready for the ins final inspections so that we can start doing insulation and then drywall and getting all the drywall and finish work done Amen? Again, thank you again for your faithful giving. Let's go ahead and pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the opportunity to give this morning, Father. We're so grateful and, and so thankful that we can give unto your kingdom. And we thank you for blessing this offering, Father. Thank you for meeting every one of our needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, as we seek first your kingdom, you promised that all other things will be added unto us. So we refuse to worry like the birds. We refuse to worry or fret. You're going to take care of us. And we thank you for this offering. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. At this point, I'm going to have Pastor Ruby come on up and share a wonderful message for you. Well, good morning, everyone. I just want to welcome you here today. Great worship today. Great message from Pastor Lou. That was an anointed uh, um, announcement that she gave. Don't you agree with me? <laughs> 
Uh, well, today I'm going to be ministering on for Mother's Day. I hope this blesses you. I hope that not only do you leave, come, come in differently, but you leave differently. And that, you know, that you're blessed beyond words and more than what you can expect anything from God uh, to have given you today. Amen. But I want to welcome all the mothers and everyone listening. I just want to tell you, Happy Mother's Day. I, I want to tell you that you're blessed coming in, blessed going out. And so today as I talk about Mother's Day, I did want to come up and just share with you a few things about what a mother is and what a mother means to me and a lot of you out there in the audience. But I want to go ahead and share some things. Is that okay? Yeah. Amen. So here goes one. I remember my mother's prayers and they have always followed me. They have clung to me and throughout my life. Abraham Lincoln said that. No matter how old a mother is, she watches her middle-aged children for signs of improvement. Amen. As a child, my father's menu, as, as a child, my family's menu consisted of two choices. It was take it or leave it. When my kids became wild and unruly, I used a nice, safe playpen. When they finished, I climbed out of it. <laughs> a mother is the name of God in the lips and hearts of little children. And that is so true because you as a mother have the impact and you impact everything that your child hears and does. Amen? I love this one here where it says, A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It is made of deep devotion and of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring. Come what may, for nothing can destroy or take away that love. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaken. And it never fails or flatters even though the heart is breaking. Amen. You know, that's the way that I feel. As a mother, even as a mother, when you lose a child, you never lose that love for that child. Whether they grow up, whether they leave your home, you always see your child as your child, no matter how old they are. And, you know, today, my title for today is called Mama Mia, My Mother. My mom was a great influence in my life, and I have to give her many, many thanks because of how she raised me and what she taught me but the most most wonderful thing that she could have given me was to introduce me to Jesus that was the one thing that I can always say thank you to my mom and love her because she instilled in me God's principles and those things have never left me and never left uh, me knowing who Jesus was in my life amen I have a lot more quotes, but I'm just going to go on with my message today. You know, mothers need to be celebrated. Mother's Day began 104 years ago by a lady named Anna Gravis. Anna Gravis never had children, but her mother was such an impact in her life that she went and dedicated this day and went up to the presidency and they they went ahead and celebrated this nationally so you know mothers have like I said a great impact in our lives and they're to be celebrated Mother's Day is one of the largest cards day in the US 139 million cards are giving out each year on Mother's Day and it's the second it, it is the second gift giving day surpassing only only by Christmas so Christmas is number one but mothers is the second one amen so today let's say thank you to all the beautiful mothers and let's honor them around the world and just let them know that we appreciate them amen yes. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 if you can put that up for me, please. 
Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Are we there yet? It reads like this. This is a letter, and it's from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus, who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. And that would be Ephesians chapter 6. But that was a great scripture anyways. <laughs> we want to give thanks to all the fathers here <laughs> and mothers. But that would be Ephesians chapter 6. I was going to say something too. But let's read, let's read it again. It says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Now get that. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on earth. Let's read it through a different translation. And let's read that through the Amplified. It says, if you children obey your parents in the Lord as he his representatives, for this is just and right. Honor, esteem, and value as precious your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promises. That all may be well with you and that you may live long on earth. You know, this scripture when I read it and it said, you know, to honor your father and mothers. But it also says this is the commandment. And it comes with the promise. You know, this promise is that if you obey your parents, that you're going to have long life on earth. This is a, a promise that is given to all the children. You know, and how important it is for us to be able to honor our father and mother. If it was important to God, you know, it should be important to us. You know, and I've got to say, you know, before I begin, as I was studying the message I was thinking about the mothers and the children and the, all the children and, and families that have had no mother here on earth and who've had mothers who perhaps weren't the greatest mother. And you say, how can I honor them? How can I love them? How can I be obedient to them when they've been terrible to me? And I couldn't get out of that question and it hurt my heart and I kept asking God like that's so true we speak about mothers and we speak about the goodness of a mother we speak about how we're to honor them and so many so many families so many growing up knew abuse knew the hurt of a mother not the love of a mother but a hurt of a mother so I was asking God you know we never cover that part in our mother's series or on a mother's day but today, I want to tell you that no matter how a mother has been to you and no matter how they've been in your life, you can be the best mother that you can awesomely be. You don't have to go by that example. You can be the mother that you always wanted. You can be the mother that has been nourishing, that has been applauding for your children, that have been there for your children, caring for your children. It doesn't have to go the way where I never was taught this way. I never had a mother like this. But instead, you can view it and say, this is the mother that I want to be, the mother that God called me to be. And not only that, but God also showed me that, you know, it's His grace. It's through His grace that you can love your parents. Regardless of how they are, you know, in the scripture, it doesn't say love your parents because they've been the best parents to you. But it says to love your, your parents, your, mo your mother and your father. You know, it's a commandment. And only God knows why he's saying that. Because it's going to bless you. Regardless of what the outbringing or upcoming or upbringing was in your family, he's going to bless you if you honor that commandment. 
But then there's those great mothers that have been here and have been loving their children and have been there for them and will bend backwards for them and do whatever they need to for their kids. You know, and, and to that we applaud them. And this is where I'm going to start with my message. A question I have for you is this, is what kind of son and daughter would you like to have raised or what kind of son or daughter would, would you like to raise? You know, there's seven things that I want to bring to your attention today about honoring your mother. Seven things. And if you're taking notes, take notes today because this is going to help you. This is going to help you cherish your mom. If maybe you forgot about your mom a little bit, it'll help you remember your mom. And I hope that as you go through your notes today that you're going to come back to scripture and you're going to come back to notes or perhaps a year later when maybe you have forgotten about your mom, you'll turn the pages and you'll remember this message and you'll say, you know what? I remember those seven things. I remember that they were brought to my attention. Amen? Amen? Number one, love your mother unconditionally. No matter what kind of a mother you have, you are to love her unconditionally. Without any terms, without any, if you did this to me, I'm going to do this to you. Because you didn't do this to me, I'm not going to do this to you. But love her unconditionally. Love her when she's young. Love her when she's old. Love her when she keeps on giving and when she can't give anymore. You're to love your mother. Amen? Because she gives you the best. When she's a young mother and, and she, you're growing up in, the, in your household, she's giving you the best that she can. She's giving you all her love, all her attention. She puts herself behind so that she can give you what you need. And I know as growing up, you know, we, we didn't have a whole lot of money, uh, my husband and I, I'm saying. And I remember with my children, if they needed something, they came before us. It was like no gifts for us, but presents for you, you know. And, and that's how a mother thinks. She always thinks of her children. Amen? She gives the best and she keeps on giving even when she can't. Your mother gives you everything. She can, she can give from her inside out. When she's young and when she's old, she keeps loving you, so you must keep loving her. See, it doesn't matter with age. Your mom still sees you as her little baby, her baby in her life. So she, she keeps loving you, and we're to love them like that as well. Amen? Number two is give her affection and love her affectionately. There are um, some that say, you know, some stickers that say, have you hugged your kids today? But I tell you, there should be a sticker saying, have you hugged your mom today? Have you hugged, hugged your mom? Have you called her today? Have you told her I love you today? Have you affectionately called on her and given her a hug? You know, given her the things that when you're out of the home, she doesn't have anymore. When you're living at home, she honors you and, and you affectionately kiss her. But sometimes we forget that when we're out of the house, we no longer call mom. We no longer hug mom. We no longer affectionately tell her, I love you anymore. It's almost like we forget those things. But I'm telling you that a mom still wants those things. Even when you're gone, she wants you to give her uh, lovingly a hug and lovingly to, to be there for her and to talk to her. Amen? It's amazing how we can take a mother for granted. And we shouldn't take mothers for granted because they mean the world to us. Amen? Amen. I'll never forget something too by affectionately loving on my mom. You know, sometimes we can get real disrespectful. 
with our mothers. And we have to remember not to get disrespectful. Because one time I got disrespectful with my mom. And I'll never forget, I said something to her. And all I remember was this big slap on my face. And boy, did it hurt. You know, but, you know, kids can be very cruel. Kids can say the most awful things. And I know in these days and ages, you know, you don't hit your children. But sometimes they do need to. You do need to kind of help them along the way and say, hey, you don't talk to mom that way. You know, you don't disrespect mom this way. And you know what? Regardless of how old you are, again, your mom is your mom and you talk to her disrespectfully. You know, she might not give you a slap in the face, but she might correct you. Amen. And, and, and for every reason, she has every right to do that. So don't disrespect her, but affectionately love on her. Amen. The third one is understand your mom. Understand her. You know, mothers go through a lot of changes. They cook, they clean, they hear you out a lot, they give you advice, they take uh, care of you, you and your dad, they make peace in the home, they're the sounding board for you. And we're to understand her when she's not having a good day or when she hasn't had good days because of whatever reason, you know, we're to understand her that she's also evolving with you. She's not staying the same as, as the same mom always. She has feelings and she goes through ups and downs. And sometimes we kids don't understand that our mothers are evolving as well. That it's not just us, but that they are evolving as well. You know, I know I see my mom and I saw her when she was young and she was a certain way with me and now that she's getting older, I see she can't do a lot of things that she used to do with me. She gets tired, she can't be out in the mall all the time, you know. She can't uh, be out for long periods of time because she's changing, she's evolving, she's older and I respect that of her and I love her for it, you know, and so you know, you have to understand your mom and what place she's in in her life so that you can get along with her because moms can be really nice, really good, but don't make her mad because she could be really angry as well. You know, and you have to understand that. You know, you say something rude, you say something maybe that might trigger her, she can become angry. But you have to understand her ways so that she in return, can stay in peace, you know, bring peace to her home. Amen? Amen. So we're evolving with our mothers and we're, we're trying to understand each other and towards each other what we do. So understand your mother. Number four, if you're writing this down, listen to her attentively. Listen to her attentively. Husbands want undivided attention when you're at home. Children want moms to listen, even in the smallest details of what they do. You know, my daughter, for instance, she has three sons and she has one daughter. And when they're all together, they're saying, oh, I'm sorry, four sons, let me correct that. Daughter, don't get mad, understand your mother. <laughs> Four sons, she has four sons and one daughter. And when they're all in the same room, you know, they're all grabbing for her attention. They all want her attention. Mom here, mom listen to me, mom, mom. They talk all over each other and they want her attention and mom's like trying to pull her hair out. It's like one at a time, I can only listen to one at a time. But you know, listen to her attentively because she pays attention to you. She pays attention when you're griping, she pays attention when you're crying. She pays attention when you're getting good grades at school, when you're coming home about children bullying you, when you're coming home because you had a great day. She's there to listen to you. How much more do we want to be attentive to our mothers? As children, we are to give the same to our mothers. Don't just put it aside or just don't put 
her aside and just think, my mom's old. My mom's just old already. She really doesn't understand. You know, we're too attentive to listen to her, her concerns at home, her concerns even with her marriage, her concerns with her children, her concerns about her, her daily life, you know, what matters to her, uh, attentively uh, to her listening to her, even when she loves novelas so much, you know, the novelas. Pay attention to your mom when she tells you, you know, I love my novella, I can't move out from the TV, don't get mad. <laughs> my mom loves her novelas. Amen. I'm going to give you a, an example of, of how a mother is attentive to you. And I bring my daughter because I, I, I was there through her having her children, through now and I re remember so vividly when we were in the car and we were coming actually from my work they had picked me up and we're coming in the car and Aubrey got sick she got sick in the back seat and she just starts throwing up poor baby just starts throwing up while we pull to the side Gina gets off the car gets in the back seat puts her on her and just lets Aubrey just spit all over her you know, and here we are driving, and I'm going, <laughs> but Gina was just holding her breath and letting the baby just spit all over her, you know, vomit all over her. So, you know, mothers do a lot. You know, mothers go all the way for you, you know, and they listen. They listen to what, when you're sick, you know, and they'll do whatever it takes to make you feel better. So we need to be attentive to our mothers, amen? Number five, help her cheerfully. You need to help your mothers cheerfully, not grudgefully. Sometimes moms can ask their children already older, and they'll ask them, mija, mijo, can you do this for me? And you hear your kids or the, the children say, oh, mom, I'm so busy, I can't today. You know, and, and they complain and they whine. But you know, she didn't do that to you when you were asking for her help. You, she was cheerfully there for you through anything. So as mothers, you know, as children, we are to cheerfully be there and help our mothers. And sometimes we tend to forget that. We tend to forget the little things that our mom did for us to help us. The tiniest little things matter to our children. The tiniest little things of a mother matters to those that she loves. So we're to help her cheerfully. Again, I'll never forget a time when my children were small. And I was thinking today, what did I go out of my way for? What, what was so helpful and cheerful to make my, my child, you know, to help her become cheerful on, on her day? It was her birthday. And I remember my, my daughter was very creative. She's very creative. And so I said, I have to be creative on how I'm going to present her gifts. So I had bought some gifts the night before. And I don't know if you remember this, John, but I went and I did a, a birthday hunt for her. And I got presents and I started hiding them in the closet, underneath the sink, underneath in the backyard, and all over the house. And I woke her up in the morning and I told her, it's your birthday, it's your birthday, you got to go find your presents. But the presents were just for her to look for. They had little notes and the little notes gave her hints of where to find those presents. Do you remember that? And so she's running around finding the notes and she's looking everywhere for her presents. But I'll tell you what, at the end of the day, it was some work for me because I had to be creative. But it was well worth it because she was so happy. She was so grateful and so cheerful that I had gone out of my way and did something like that for her. And I got her everything on her list. Amen. So, you know, children, be grateful for your mothers. You know, help her out. Be cheerful when, when, when she needs you there. Remember her. You know, don't let her be an inconvenience. But instead... Let her, let her be the pride of, of who you have become and the pride of, of knowing that she's my mom. She raised me. She's been there for me all along. 
And so you need to be able to do that for her. Amen? Number six, I'm not going to have a long message. It's a pretty short message, but it's to the point. And again, it's to just help you remember your mom on this day. Remember that she will always love you and that we're to love and honor her. Amen? But number six is remember her in all times. Remember her all the times because one day she won't be here on earth. One day she's going to be gone and you're going to say, I should have done this. I should have said that. You know, and I get... <laughs> I get a little bit sensitive just knowing that those mothers that have gone to heaven and the children that have been disobedient and later on the regret that you might have for not honoring your mom, for not remembering her. I'm sorry, <laughs> but thank you. I'm a sentimental type of person, and I'll cry if I want. <laughs> it's my party. It's my party. But be grateful when she has nourished you. And also, when she's old, invite her. Don't forget her. Invite her to go out to lunch. Invite her to your home. If she's in a nursing home, don't forget her. Love on her. Go to her. You know, so many, I used to go to, uh, to nursing homes, and you see so many old people in there. And they're left all alone. And no one there with them. And yet they have families, but they seem to be forgotten. And so I'm asking you today, don't forget your mothers. They're everything. They've been there for you through thick and thin. So we're to love our mothers, amen? And we're to remember them always. And lastly, I want to tell you, you know, how much she's needed. Remind her how much she is needed. Remind her that you'll always need her, that you'll always need her by your side. She's there when you got married. She's there when you walked down the aisle. She's there. She's been there through your child, your, your bearing your children. She's been there at your worst time. So we're to remember her always because she's the one that's there. She's the one that raised you. She's the one that woke up with you in the mornings, middle of the night when you were sick. You know, she's the one that has been there with you always. And so we're not to forget her in any ways. Not when she gets old. Not when she's only young. But we're never to forget her. Amen. So with that, I hope that today I play something in your hearts. And that's to honor your mother. You know, God wants us to do this. He, he put this commandment here. He wrote this for our sakes so that it will go well on earth here and so that we may live longer. So, you know, if there's something, I want to live long. I want to honor my mom because I want to be here a long time. You know, and if God himself, Jesus himself honored his mom, you know, how much more are we not to honor other, our, our mothers here on earth? Amen? So with that, I want to close and... Perhaps you've been here and you haven't been the greatest mother. Perhaps you've been one of those mothers that perhaps have neglected your children. Never too late. It's never too late to turn things around. You can always turn things around. You can always become who you need to become. You can always be that loving mother, that mother that cherishes their kids, that are, is there for them always. And if you've been a mother that has always been a giving mother, continue to be giving. Continue to love your children. And children, also remember, don't forget your moms. 
you know, love them as much as you can because you're, you're not always going to have them here. There's going to be a time where they're, they're going to be gone with the Lord. So honor them now while you can and, and, and give your best to them. Amen? Amen. If we want to bow our heads right now, for those out in the audience, for those that are listening through YouTube, I just, let's pray right now, Father. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for all the mothers around the world. We thank you that today we honor them. And we thank you, Father God, that we continue to look up to them, that we continue to love on them, that we continue to never forget them, to always help them, to always cheerfully be there for them. Father, I thank you, Father God, that we're going to be good listeners, Father God, and good example to our children. And Father, most importantly, I ask that those that don't have mothers right now, Father, I ask that you hug them and give them your love and attentively listen to them and give them what they need today. We thank you, Father. We praise you right now in Jesus' mighty name. I ask that you give a great blessing to all the mothers right now in Jesus' mighty name. And while we all say, Amen. Amen.